Welcome back. So while the previous segment already gave you a little bit of an introduction, um, we will dedicate now this segment to the terminology used in DeFi lending and borrowing. So let's start with the very first uh, terminology that's quite important, which is the collateral. Collateral is a security deposit. It's an asset that the borrower provides uh, in order to secure its debt, right? So the more debt you take on, the more collateral you need to provide because the collateral is a security deposit that uh, guarantees that you can pay back your debt. You cannot take on too much debt, otherwise you would be indebted, right? Uh, so this, there needs to be some kind of a security deposit here. And based on this, there are two um, possible um, uh, lending profiles or lending methods on chain at the moment. This is the first is the over collateralized setting and second it's the under collateralized setting. So in the over collateralized setting is where the borrower provides a collateral uh, of which the value is higher than the granted loan. Right? So this also implies that your leverage multiplier is inferior to 2x. Right? Under collateralized loans allow you to um, borrow more than uh, that than you actually have. Um, so the collateral value here can be inferior to the debt value that you take on. And this also means that you can have leverage uh, beyond 2x uh, in general. Now you might ask, well, great. I mean, on chain, I'm anonymous, right? I can, I can just like take on any kind of uh, collateral uh, and then just just run away with the money because I don't, I mean, why would I need to pay it back? There's nobody else can catch me on chain, right? Um, well, the thing is in the over collateralized lending systems here, you can freely uh, use your money, right? Freely use uh, the debt um, that you that you take on. So it's actually a token that you can redeposit. You can, you can even redeposit it as a collateral in some systems. Um, while in the under collateralized setting here, they're highly restricted. So you will not actually have access to the funds, right? Um, so the smart contract will, will, uh, will basically um, manage how you, how you can deal with the money or what is being done with the money. So the under collateralized setting is much more restricted precisely because uh, you don't want um, you want it to, to still remain secure in the sense that you shouldn't like just leave with your with your debt. So the fourth term here that I would like to introduce is a liquidation that we already mentioned in the high level system figure. So more uh, formally, so if the value of the collateral goes beyond a certain threshold, for example, 150% times the value of the debt, then you might become liquidated. Um, so anyone can open, uh, can basically uh, create a liquidation request or anyone can liquidate a debt position. Um, as mentioned earlier, you might get a percentage discount on the uh, collateral value. So it's, you, you get it as a lower value than the market value, which incentivizes you to perform a liquidation. Um, but there may also be auctions uh, instead of fixed spread liquidations. So the next terminology is a health factor. So what is a health factor? So the health factor is defined as the sum of all the collateral you have times a liquidation threshold. So the liquidation threshold is a value between zero and one, and it basically discounts for the collateral. Um, and so if you if you take all the, the, the sum uh, of this collateral liquidation threshold, you divide it by the total value of your debt, you end up with the health factor. So the value of the collateral times the liquidation threshold times this discount is referred to as the borrowing capacity. So this is how much you can borrow. And as mentioned earlier here, the liquidation threshold is between 0, 0 and 1 and provides us a secure margin. So it's not really secure in, a, in any technical sense. It's more like it's a, it's a buffer, right? It's really just a buffer of you think of how much will this... Um, which is where does the value fluctuate and what, what is a safe way to avoid liquidation. So when the health factor of a, of a, of a borrowing position declines below one, then this position becomes liquidatable, right? So this, this is the point in time where 
a particular uh, liquidator can can liquidate your position. Well, anyone can do this, but this is the point in time where uh, entities are able to call the smart contract to liquidate your position. So let's go on on this health factor. Let's go on with a very concrete example. So we will have here uh, uh, a collateral. So we will take, for example, let's say we collateralize at the very beginning, we collateralize one Ether. And the exchange rate between Ether and DAI is uh, 2000 at the very at the start of this position, right? So the exchange rate ETH to DAI is 2000. Uh, so this means that the collateral value here, uh, because we, we issue like one, one, one ETH as collateral, the, um, the, uh, the borrowing capacity that we can get is at maximum 1500 DAI, okay? So in this particular example. So, and we say that the liquidation threshold, we set the liquidation threshold to 0 0.75. So given these numbers, we can calculate that the health factor in this particular instance is 1.2, okay? So that's, that's at, the, at the very beginning of the borrowing positions. So now over time, so we open this position, right? So now over time, uh, we can use our, our debt, right? This is capital that we have free access to, so we can do what we want with it, which is great, right? We, have, we can continue to speculate, for example, on the ether value, but we do have additional DAI at our disposal that we actually can convert back to ether and, and continue this, the same game if you want to. But let's assume we just stay with this 1250 DAI uh, position and the ether price changes. So here, the ether price goes down, right? So the exchange rate ether to DAI is now only 1600. So the value of the debt remains the same, right? This didn't change. I mean, we didn't pay back any debt, but now the value of our collateral here is quite smaller and that's not great. And we can see that our borrowing capacity is now only 1,200 die, which is inferior to our debt, which is 1,250 die. And this in turn also means that our health factor is now below one. And that's obviously not a great thing because suddenly we became liquidatable or this borrowing position became liquidatable. A few more terminology items that might really help you to, to grasp those, those protocols and systems. So you have a liquidation spread. Uh, as mentioned, this is a bonus or discount, right? That the liquidator can collect when liquidating collateral. So um, it's basically um, the value of the collateral to claim is equivalent to the value of the debt to repay times one plus this liquidation spread. So this is the value of the collateral that can be claimed. The close factor is quite important in the liquidation setting as well. So that's the maximum proportion of the debt that is allowed to be repaid in a single fixed spread liquidation. So sometimes in some protocols, the close factor is 50%. So this means you can at most pay back 50% of the debt uh, in a single fixed spread liquidation. Well, 50% of, of a debt repayment is quite a lot. Uh, in, in most cases, or in, in, in many cases, this will be uh, an excessive liquidation. And we've seen evidence on chain that liquidators are excessively liquidating uh, the, the collateral from borrowers. So just to give you uh, here uh, some further information, so the value of the debt to repay should always be inferior to the close factor times the value of the debt. But this close factor is, yeah, the, it's, it's mostly set as a constant. I think it's like 0 0.5 in, in RV, so 50%. Which is, which is quite significant and, and not uh, in the interest of the borrowers in general. Very well, I hope this terminology will help you to speak the same language as, as we do, as well as to synchronize efficiently with your peers.